Hi friends, welcome back to my training series. I hope you're doing well and I hope you're hanging in there. Well, this is week 30 of this training series, which I originally started at the beginning of the year to document how I got ready for the Cocodona 250. And then after that, I just kept the series going after quite a few runners asked me if I would. And so now uh, we're documenting as I'm getting ready for the Divide 200 in just a few weeks. And as I've been talking about, I've had a rough time after Cocodona. The energy levels were low. I didn't feel good. I was coughing and breathing issues. But things are starting to feel better in the last few weeks. And this week also felt great. I can feel energy returning. I can feel enthusiasm returning. And it all just feels pretty good. So let's talk, let's talk about this week's training. On Monday, I had a rest day. And then in addition to work on Monday, I also spent more time planning for the Divide 200. I watched Adrian Powell's great video from last year's race, and then I studied his Strava as well so I could start to get a sense of some of the pacing of, of the early sections. I'm also getting pretty excited about the Divide 200 and the challenges that it will present to me. After many weeks of complaining about my Cocodona recovery, it just feels good to have sort of some excitement coming back. It's really making me smile. On Tuesday, my running assignment was easy running with some fart licks. While my pace didn't reflect it, I did feel a little stronger on this run than some of my recent Tuesday Easy Runs. I finished with 5.8 miles in 76 minutes. And then after work, I did my weekly yoga session over Zoom. And breathing out. On Wednesday, I was assigned 60 minutes of easy running. I did my usual easy neighborhood road loop, and again my pace was slower than I would like, but the running did feel better than a few weeks ago. I feel like I'm starting to get some energy back. I finished the 6.1 mile loop in 61 minutes. On Thursday, my assignment was LT intervals with five times six minutes hard and three minutes easy. These interval workouts are never comfortable for me, but I got it done and felt good about my effort. I ran for a total of 85 minutes and did 7.5 miles. On Friday, I was assigned 40 minutes of either rowing or easy running. So I got on my indoor runner for 40 minutes while I watched some YouTube. On Saturday, I was assigned a four hour endurance run. My next big run, the Divide 200, is less than a month away now, and it features some pretty big climbs. So I, for this run, I set out to get some vertical training in. I power hiked up Mount Sai, a popular trail east of Seattle, then ran down, then hiked back up and ran back down. I wasn't able to get two full repeats done in four hours, but it was a great workout. I finished in four hours and nine minutes, collecting 12 and a half miles with almost 5,300 feet of gain. Finally, on Sunday, I was assigned another four hour run. I didn't have time to travel back to the big hills east of Seattle, so I went to my usual park and focused on trails that would give me some decent ups and downs. I did run a little bit, but my body was really tired from the day before, so I often felt like moving at all was a victory. It was a warm morning after a big rainstorm, so the trails were wet and the air was really humid. I was soaked in sweat for most of the time out there, and it was a slog, making a good mental training just to keep moving. In four hours, I finished 14 and a half miles with 3,100 feet of gain. Overall, it was a good week. I continue to feel stronger and feel more alive on the trails. I finished the week running 46.4 miles in a total of 11 hours and 55 minutes. So it was overall a pretty good week. I feel good about it. Uh, I got a few questions this week. Thank you to those of you who sent them in in the comments below. First off, Dr. Knott asks for tips for running in the hot temperatures of the Las Vegas desert. Wow, early morning temps of 85, are, that's brutal. I also saw that another runner also replied to your comment, which I love to see. I'm so happy to see a little bit of community happening in my comment section. Uh, and I do think that their suggestion of doing shorter loops so that you can get back to your car and sort of replenish on ice or dumping something over your head is a great idea. Uh, in, in addition to that, some of the thoughts that I had, well, I don't necessarily have a great deal of experience training in the way that you are, but I think the things that came to mind for me uh, would be to wear long sleeve stuff and a hat, basically do anything you can to keep the sun off of you and to keep the UV away. I think that'll may not necessarily help you feel that much cooler, but I think it'll help protect you against the sun. The, and also there are some products like Orange Mud makes arm sleeves that have pockets for ice. So you that can help you put ice on nice spots like uh, on the inside of the bicep or on the forearm to help get some cooling in some good strategic places. And there are also hats designed to carry ice that melt over your head. So maybe you could leave with a, a bunch of ice on top 
or maybe there's even a, a, a hat that I saw that has like a, a cape pocket that sits on the back of the neck, almost like an ice bandana. Uh, these ideas involving ice will be really great to help keep you cool. They won't last all two hours of your run, but it should help you for a little bit. And as you mentioned in your comments, slowing down is probably a necessity in the heat too. Uh, all of that and the other thing is I would probably also do what you suggest and perhaps go inside and do a little bit of treadmilling as well. Good luck staying cool. That's uh, Those are some high temps you're having to manage. Tony asks, what kind of rewards and self-care I give myself after an ultra that really pushed me? Well, Tony, as much as I like to be structured and have a plan during my training, I do admit that I kind of wing it when it comes to recovery. Uh, after a tough ultra, I really enjoy just taking a break from training, sleeping in and otherwise taking it easy. I think that's probably the biggest change that I make is just take take the foot off the gas in terms of training schedule, allow myself a little bit of time off. I also like to eat a lot. There's, there's so much hunger that comes after a big ultra. So I eat quite a bit. I do feel like the question is asking for a little bit more of an interesting answer that I have, but um, I'm afraid about all I have, it's interesting is that I just like to take a break. Chad is back with another deep thought question and asks, given a situation where I'm hungry, tired, and annoyed by my pacer, what might I do? Well, Chad, assuming that this is happening mid-segment where I'm not at an aid station where I could actually eat that hamburger that you propose, I would say that this particular situation probably calls for a nap. If you're feeling tired uh, and all the things that come with tired, you know, maybe feeling annoyed or frustrated, um, Hunger fits into this too, but I think the most immediate thing that I could do in this situation is lay down and take a nap. Maybe I would set a timer for 10 minutes and just lie down and hope for a reset. Rest solves so many problems out on the trail. Uh, and in this particular situation, that reset would probably help me get to the next aid station where I could order that hamburger and get my, cal my caloric intake back up, which would again uh, additionally help with all of this annoyance caused by the pacer in this story. And then of course, depending on how things are going, a nap at that aid station might also be warranted to get just a little bit more rest. And, uh, and those, But those calories certainly would be essential. Phil noticed that the Divide 200 has a lot of elevation gain and wonders how I incorporate that into my training. Yeah, Phil, uh, Cal Topo is showing about 45,000 feet, but I don't think that's totally right. When I look at the Cal Topo map, there seems to be a couple errors and maybe that's adding some additional elevation. Uh, the website for the race says that it's 40,000 feet of gain, which is still quite a lot. So when I'm training for a run that has a lot of climbing, I will occasionally drive to a trail and uh, focus on some elevation gain and be somewhat specific about it. In fact, that's what I did this last week. I don't do it often enough, and I think after a race, I often wish that I had done more of this sort of vertical training uh, because I think it can be pretty helpful, but it's not feasible for me to do it all the time. So a majority of my training runs feature runnable stuff as well as some climbing, so a bit sort of well-rounded, um, all the kinds of things in one. Because uh, I, I don't want to make every training run a complete slog. I want to have fun doing it too. The elevation-focused workouts are a little bit less fun for me. They're a bit more tedious, but also that's good because that becomes mental training if, to be able to just push through the slogginess and uh, and get the workout done. But I don't want to do that all the time. I want to have fun when I'm doing this. So I try to space out those really specific tough workouts, um, I guess a little bit. But as I get close to an event, like I, right now I'm getting close to the Divide 200, uh, when I, when there's still time to make, get some effective training and I do like to get some vert in just to sort of make sure that I'm feeling confident when it, when it comes to race time. Lastly, Jennifer asks about a good distance for a beginner to train for. Well, Jennifer, I like hearing that you're running road 5Ks. I think that they're fun for what they are, but I also like that you love the trails. And I would totally recommend that you go for a, a trail 10K. It's, that distance is a little bit further than what you've been doing, but it'll give you something to train for, uh, build, but it'll be building on that base that you already have. And being on the trail has all the goodness of trail running, of course. Uh, but the other thing is that I would embrace the ethos of trail running that uh, I often see people talking about, which is to care less about pace uh, than road runners do. Just get out there and have fun and run and hike or walk or whatever pace feels good to you at the time. 
And then after a while, after you're, maybe you do a 10K or two and you enjoy that, uh, and maybe you want some more, maybe at that point you can break into the half marathon distance and you know find a half marathon that appeals to you that you'd like to train for and work towards. So yeah, I, I'm really excited to hear that uh, you know, you're kind of looking to branch into some trail running. I wish you lots of joy, and I hope they have a great time. Okay, thank you all for your questions this week. If you have a question you'd like me to talk about in next week's video, leave it in the comments below. And I think that's it for now. I hope you all have a really great week, and thanks a lot for watching.